Sirius, NSW, people who pledged fraternities or sororities, what were the crazy things that happened? My favorite was when we got all the pledges to be the pieces of a chess set, and we played wizards chess with them, everyone loved it. We did something similar, at the beginning of the pledging process we had the pledges each buy our pack of Pokemon cards. We then assigned them each Pokemon and an attack move. Randomly throughout the semester we had them battle each other. Dressed about 6 pledges in ballerina type clothing. Stuff to get them embarrassed. Handcuffed them all together in a circle facing outwards. Drove them a couple miles from school. 4. And told them they had 2 hour to walk back to campus. It's a rural farm area so they pretty much just had to walk straight. After about 30 minutes to an hour. The frat brothers drove back to tell them it was a joke and they could get a ride back to campus. Except they couldn't find the group of dudes who were handcuffed together and all wearing pink. Who should have been taking the lone road back to campus. Frat brothers drive for hours looking for them and never find where they went. Eventually they freak out. Fear the worst. And head back to campus. They go to get help with finding the lost pledges in the countryside. Only to see all the pledges back and safe. Turns out the pledges walked up to the closest farm, had a good laugh with the farmer, and the farmer drove them back to campus in his pickup. Comma turns out the pledges walked up to the closest farm. That was a gamble. They must not have seen deliverance. My sister's friend told me a story that always stuck. She picked her boyfriend from the last day of heck week, which is the last week of hazing I think before initiation. He said it wasn't that bad at first. The pledges had to drink a lot of beers, after most of them were feeling pretty buzzed drunk. The actives then put them in a dark room, threw on a strobe light, and brought out a jigsaw puzzle. They weren't allowed to leave until it was finished. It took them 4 hours. This is sounds familiar, and it also sounds like the puzzle wasn't hard enough. It should take significantly longer than 4 hours. While we had our nights of doing some basic calisthenics and whatnot. Pledgeship was a freaking blast. It was basically an excuse to do anything and it'd be laughed off. As well as girls absolutely loving it, you got a little bit of sympathy for it but they also like seeing you slightly embarrassed. Group of attractive girls comes to the party but no one is talking to them. You can bet your butter pledges will be forced to go over and start dancing with them. A song comes on at tailgate that everyone knows the dance to. Pledges will be dancing their stupid little hearts out. A sorority is hosting an event and needs guys to come help set up and cook. Well sure you have to do a little work but you'll be hanging out with girls for a few hours. If a group finishes library study hall early, you can't go home because your pledge brothers are still working. Instead, you have to go around the library and get as many numbers as possible without speaking. We were given the previous record and told we could come back when we had beaten that number. While some of the girls just gave you a number because they knew what our task was or just wanted to get rid of you, there were a few who insisted we call them later that night when we could speak again. Not only that, there was crap we did with the actives that was fun. We had the campus wide, hide and seek night, pledges in dark clothes came out, actives in their vehicles or on foot. We were given vague clues about the location of several items around campus and it was our job to collect them all and make it back to the house without being seen. We split ourselves into several groups and off we went. If you were caught, you were blindfolded and dropped off somewhere on the other side of campus and allowed to continue from there. It's a shame that most people only hear about horrible hazing stories, most of which are likely blown a little out of proportion, and not the epic times that you have while a pledge and active. That last one sounds like tons of fun. I rushed a fraternity in college and can honestly say that I wasn't hazed. I never had to do anything I was afraid or embarrassed to tell my parents and it actually was a great experience for me. I did, however, have a friend who rushed SAE and had to do some fricked up crap. Most notable being put into a dark basement with the rest of his rushing class. The active stripped them naked, gave them all tweezers, and proceeded to dump containers of sprinkles on the floor. The object was to sort them by color with the only light coming from a strobe light. If they messed up they'd have to do it again until they got it right. I can't believe he did that. Sounds like a nightmare to me. I just drank and had fun all the time with my frat. Cheers. Same here.
my fraternity sent a letter to my parents telling them that they would treat their pledges with respect. My dad sent a letter back saying he had pledged a fraternity in the 70s and that they were to do their worst. We just made kids get out of their comfort zone, like making them sing to a sorority. They had certain items they had to carry, including a pledge book. They had to interview every brother and write down certain facts in their pledge book. At weekly meetings they would be quizzed to see if they were memorizing things. Each class had to do a project, but they pretty much picked it out themselves. Pledges had DD duty that rotated on a calendar. A few brothers were dongs and might have joked around with pledges too much. Maybe even tell them to drink something. But in general the hazing was nothing like movies and if a pledge was ever uncomfortable the fraternity officers and all of the brothers except a few buttholes would have had their back. The sisters poured several containers of sprinkles onto newspaper. And we had to dip our hands in marshmallow fluff and organize them by color. Around 4am after about 5 hours of this, they told us the whole point of the exercise was that things that belong together, like sisters, can't be separated. This was during our heck week, so afterwards we went back to dorms and had to be in the library at 6am in formal wear. While I heard much worse stories, from friends in other sororities, mine really had no hazing that I would consider an issue by any means. Just before being accepted, my pledge class was hazed by being rousted out of bed at 2 in the morning, blindfolded, and taken to a local park in our night clothes. While there we had to ride the merry-go-round, go down the slide, swing, climb monkey bars, etc while we had food stuff thrown at us, jello, hot dogs, cheese in a can, whipped cream, condiments, etc. We had to keep singing various songs etc. It was in good fun and made a complete mess. At the end, we were hosed off and given towels to dry off, then given sweats with our letters. The only NSW thing about it was that we all decided that we didn't want a smell of ketchup, mustard, relish, etc so we immediately all stripped down and put on the sweats. We were taken back to the house for a big breakfast by the time it was all done. I'm assuming you mean hazing, which the only thing Rush's pledges had to do was go camping together for one night and it was pretty cold, so the guys with crappy sleeping bags had to huddle together. Besides it being cold that night, and a few lame team building games, it was pretty fun. That was seriously the closest thing to hazing. We did do a milk chug every year, but it was completely optional and probably only 20% of people. Pledges and brothers, did it. The craziest thing that happened was at one of the annual foam parties. We had an outbuilding with the first floor rigged up to fill about 4.5 feet high with foam. About 400 FT2 with a stage for short people. Every year some people get naked and there's always a little steamy time action going on under the bubbles. One year someone threw something that just demolished the bubbles instantly. Something like 70% of the bubbles in one of the rooms were gone in the blink of an eye. Lots of naked people hurrying to cover themselves. We never found out what, but from my investigation, I think it was a mixture of bacon fat and talc in a flour-like consistency. It was unreal how quickly the bubbles all popped. As to why I joined a fraternity, money, living in the house was cheaper than living on campus and I didn't have to buy a meal plan if I was in the house. It was just barely cheaper my senior year to move in with some friends into a rental off campus. Also, the particular fraternity I was in had the most amazing house of any fraternity ever. We had an extra two story building for parties and we could fill it with foam and that one only one of our outbuildings. I am in a fraternity in the South SEC school. It really isn't at all like many people think it is. Schools and nationals are very hardcore about there being no hazing. Craziest thing that happened that I can think of right now would probably be either going to Talladega, which is crazy just because Talladega is freaking crazy, or going to New Orleans and just getting absolutely s-faced. Fraternities around here don't really treat pledges like absolute crap. Actives just frick with them sometimes. It would be a lot less fun to be in a fraternity if the entire freshman class was treated like dogs and not friends. LSU student detected. My school recently had a frat that was removed for doing weird obscene crap and making it public via video someone took on a phone that apparently got into the wrong hands. Who who who, uh oh. As a pledge in the early 90s I got called into the fraternity house at midnight the week after Thanksgiving. 
and was told, yelled at, that the house had to be decorated before the brothers got up the next morning. We proceeded to tear down every Christmas decoration, climbing trees to take down lights, swiping every wreath and piece of garland we could find within 3 miles, hitting only businesses. We created the biggest elf looking scene ever in that house, with a fully decorated tree complete with mini bottles over all the lights. We were so proud. Brothers thought it was awesome. However it took the police one peek through the massive street front windows to put two and two together. The house was bare of anything Christmas related, Grinch style. Within 10 minutes of the police car stopping in front of the house. By the time the campus police and city police came in, the whole night was nothing but a memory. We had to recite Lion Eating Poet in Stone Den, and if the pronunciation was wrong, we had to eat a big bowl of rice with no side dishes or toppings. For a Japanese like me. My identical twin brother pledge a frat at our university. Got yelled at by his actives for not wearing pledge attire and they wouldn't believe me that I wasn't him until I pulled out my dang it. The next year I was given permission to frick with the pledges with my twin. It was glorious. I pledged got a bit but didn't accept. Although all my friends were PKA so I got all the benefits with no punishments. Here's one. It was Friday 6pm we're playing Halo. Me and three brothers. They get s call that they are to meet at the house in 15 minutes. 30 minutes later they're calling me they won't be back until tomorrow. They had to pack 5 deep in an accord and get a picture with the Washington Monument by tomorrow. We're in Alabama. LOL they had to drive to DC. Get a pick and drive back. They called it bonding. You're frick that. We didn't have heck week but we had two nights everyone went through for initiation. First one was called feel the fire. Through all of pledgeship brothers would make comments about how you should always swim left. Swim left swim left swim left. If someone told you to swim right they were fricking with you and you have to swim left. Then a brother you really trusted would pull you aside late into pledgeship and say you'll never make it back if you swim left. You have to swim right. Keep in mind we had no idea what the frick this meant. Just that I guess at some point we would be swimming and we should swim left. Then the day before feel the fire, an older brother would let slip that we would all be driven to a town 13 miles away at midnight and we all had to make it back to the fraternity house by morning or pledge ship would be extended indefinitely. We were told to dress warm as there was a creek at one point you had to cross and this was in the middle of October. Well the night finally came and the president made the announcement we'd all be dropped off 13 miles away and had to make it back by morning. They blindfolded us, put us in cars, drove us around for 15 minutes, took us out and sat us all down on the ground then told us to take our blindfolds off. We were back in the fraternity parking lot with couches set up around a fire where all the brothers sat. 30 of us were sitting in rows of 5 with only the first row able to feel the fire. It was freaking cold and you wanted to be in the front row. When a brother yelled switch the front row would quickly get up and move to the back and all the other rows would scooch up a row. We spent the next 9 hours awake sitting up straight being told stories, jokes, presentations by the older brothers on whatever topics they liked. Some were very sentimental. Some were just ragging on other brothers. Some taught us advanced accounting and a history lesson on the spread of kudzu in Georgia. The catch was the entire time brothers would frick with us mercilessly, including dumping buckets of ice water on the back rows, pelting you with food or empty beer cans. They also made 5-6 pumpkin heads which were just pumpkins with a hole cut out in the bottom and all the pumpkins had to be worn at all times. When a brother yelled pumpkin switch you had to pass the pumpkin to a pledge brother. This went on until the sun rose and despite almost getting hypothermia, it was an hilarious night. Let me know if you're interested in the final night of pledgeship as I'm worried no one will read this since the post is so old. You never went back to the swim left thing. I'm so lost. My cousin rushed in Oklahoma and has red hair. When he was a pledge they gave him a broom and a handle of tequila and made him ride it all night saying he was Ron and he'd just seen the snitch. He also had to finish the handle. He's a funny guy so I'm sad I missed it. We had a narrow corridor leading to the main living room. We would place a trophy or something on the fireplace and tell the pledges they had to retrieve it. Because of the narrow hallway, numbers didn't count for crap. This was also done with all the lights off, except for the red emergency exit lights, the windows blacked out, and music like Mortal Kombat playing. People would tackle each other and things would usually get pretty intense. 
we would normally let them win once we saw that they were working together. There were usually a few injuries from both the pledges and brothers, but the idea wasn't to beat the crap out of each other, and I think we eventually put people standing on the sides to make sure nothing ever went too far. No drinking was allowed during this. I went to an SEC school with a very large Greek system. Nothing too crazy happened when I joined my fraternity. Mostly just cleaning the house. Driving drunk active members around. The only real hazing we ever had was big brother night. This was the night where we were essentially inducted into becoming pledges. It was more funny than anything. They dressed us up in trash bags and some basement. Did case races and tour de Franzia until we all puked. Then did some ritual stuff. We marched quarter decks in the freezing cold a few times. Oh. Bows and toes. Those were always fun. Push up position with elbows on bottle caps. Once again it was never really malicious. Just more funny than anything. Some friends and other fraternites had the stereotypical paddling and all that weird balls. I have a lot of stories but the ones that pop into my head are things that got us or could have gotten us into trouble. One of my pledge brothers broke his paddle over some kid's face. That got us put on probation and he was thrown in the pokey. Another guy threw a large tube TV out of his window and almost hit a cop that happened to be walking by. That got us thrown off campus for a while. We had a new year's party with approximately 900 people shoved into our house over winter break when the house was supposed to be closed for maintenance. I personally threw an M80 into another fraternity house's bathroom while some guy was taking a crap. This was revenge for him pee in our mail slot. The cops showed up and I somehow got out of it. Two guys were caught in a drug ring not associated with us in any way. Some brain scientist 7th year senior robbed a Jimmy John's driver at his own address. We somehow were dragged into it because he was a former member. Just so I'm clear the M80 wasn't a one stroke four stick of dynamite from the 1970s. It was basically an oversized firecracker from a roadside stand. This is definitely LSU. Sorority girl here no crazy crap. We're pretty strict on the whole no hazing thing. Why? Because Greek life as a whole gets in deep deep crap if there's hazing. So to keep a good rep, we don't haze. I hope you girls still had bonding activities. My university considers even scavenger hunts hazing. I wasn't in a frat but had friends that were. Two funny ones stick out the most. Made all the guys stand in a room naked watching hardcore gay pee. The first person to pop a boner had to eat a donut off the last person to pop one. Every pledge member had to wear Jean shorts one inch above the knees every day for a month. If they didn't wave and acknowledge a brother they passed, they would have to cut one inch off the shorts. That got pretty funny as the month went on. Made all the guys stand in a room naked watching hardcore gay pee. The first person to pop a boner had to eat a donut off the last person to pop one. I guarantee they made that up to frick with you. I joined a crap fraternity because they were my only good friends in college. Crazy things, really crazy parties with lots of booze, lots of drugs, and lose morals. I saw a lot of creepy people try to join prey on these parties. For example, this one girl known to be on the easier side was drunk and outside with a pledge smoking. When they finished, he tried to pick her up and take her. He didn't get far because he's a smoker and a pee, but we kicked him after that. Didn't help that he asked me where to find H. I got into a couple fights and standoffs with rival fraternities, typically on our front porch and typically because they were trying to steal something of ours. Saw brothers throwing fireworks at people from our rooftop. Outside of that, nothing we did was too crazy for what is college. Actives versus pledges case race. Tour de Franzia, holiday parties, drinking and music of all sorts. It was definitely fun. Just make sure you don't lose your focus on school. Don't skip out on class or studying. Nothing, really. We didn't have to do anything weird. We did get blindfolded a couple of times for a couple of rituals. But I felt completely safe with my sisters both times. And other than the rituals, which were overly dramatic and theatrical, my sorority experience was nothing like TV movies. We studied a lot, did a lot of charity work, did a lot of campus activities, etc. We had quiet parties with our brother for rats, never got in trouble for anything, were generally well respected. There was one sister who went off to do pee, one we did a drug intervention for and sent to rehab. And oh, does it count that we rescued one from a pimp? 
I was technically a pledge at that point, but really, my sorority experience was really tame. I didn't go to a big party school, but I was a part of a big international group. Joined a fraternity, and I'm glad we never had to go through any of this bulls. You can't be kicking someone in the chest one day and call them your brother the next because they went through some ceremony. The pledging process should challenge you, but it should also build you up into something better, not degrade you for the amusement of others. Had to sit crossled in a circle and finish around 15 cases of beer. If we had to pee we had to pee ourselves, and if we had to throw up we had to throw up on the person to our left. Actually was pretty hilarious and horribly gross. We were underground so there was like 20 of us. We were there a while. The kid to my right had chipotle for dinner. Sounds like a good way to spread diseases. Not a frat or sorority, but a sports team. Me and my fellow co-captains created a fake, but very similar email as my coach. We emailed all the recruits who were already committed saying that it is a requirement that every collegiate athlete at the school writes an essay coming in just to prove that they are well-rounded, or some kind of BS like that. The topics were as broad and idiotic as possible. 5 pages on snow and its many applications. 7 pages on chairs. Yes just chairs. After, we had them email it to the real coach, us, athletic director and admissions office. Their first weekend in we would have them over, get them drunk and read their essays out loud to the whole team. We found our 65 year old white house mom giving a black guy head behind a dumpster at a local bar. Saw her at the house the next morning and she acted like nothing had happened. This one I heard first or second year. Fraternity is hazing the new ones by making them stand in the ocean up to their shoulders at night. Kid get hypothermia and rushed to the air. Had a choice of to sue them. But instead accepted the bribe to join on the spot. University gets wind of this and the frat gets banned or dismantled. They are still trying to get rechartered I think. In a nutshell. Barely ever sleep. Constantly forced to do hours of physical activity while being berated and having crap thrown at on you. Eating drinking disgusting concoctions alcohol. And basically doing whatever they tell you to do. Definitely makes you close with the guys around you but it's hard to say I would do it again. Don't regret it at all though. It's not as glorious as the movies make it out to be. And nowhere near as horrible as it might seem. Also, it wasn't any more expensive than what I would have spent living and eating on campus. I went to a state school. My fraternity I feel has the right idea of hazing. It's tough, it's time consuming, but it's not dangerous. They never took us into the woods and poured alcohol down our throats or anything like that. It was hazing in the safest possible way. I never felt like I was in danger. That's what hazing should be like. There's a whole lot of rationalization going on in this thread. And this is coming from someone who went through boot camp. I can understand building a team and a sense of camaraderie, but a lot of these stories just sound like some power crazed upperclassmen getting off on ordering pledges around. I pledged an SEC school fraternity and it was freaking brutal. We had a week of nothing the first week and it was great we all thought it would stay like that. Till the 8th day we get calls at 1 in the morning and are all told to report to the house. We did planks on broken glass bottles and bottle caps for about 4 hours. Another incident, all 50 pledges were taken into a storage locker where members would sit outside and blow smoke in though the hole in the door. Forced to walk 10 miles in shorts and a t-shirt while it was 20 degrees out while soaking wet. Got really sick after that. It was absolutely terrible. I made it 2 months and dropped cause it was such crappy conditions. Ms. Our Arkansas. I don't think it gets that cold anywhere else in the SEC. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.